The laser skill in Starfield is absolutely broken. It'll turn your boring old cutter into a tank shredder that is technically the highest DPS weapon in the game, and it's not even close, especially for anyone who plays on higher difficulties. Today we'll be taking a closer look at all 17 of the combat skills in Starfield and digging into exactly how they function and whether they're worth your hard-earned skill points. Many of these skills have extremely vague descriptions, so it can be hard to tell just how effective certain upgrades actually are. Thankfully for you, I've been hard at work in the lab with my loyal test subjects in an effort to dispel the mystery around things like crit chance, how different damage buffs interact, and more. You're definitely going to want to stick around to the end because this skill tree has had the most interesting test results I've seen yet. As always, these rankings are subjective, but they've been formed on a foundation of thorough research. Of course, you may completely disagree with me, so I encourage you to please share your own opinions and insights in the comments. I genuinely love the discussion. I've learned a ton and have even changed my perspective on some skills thanks to all of your comments. A final note before we get started is that there are so many factors that will influence our perceived value of each skill in this tree, so it's going to be just about impossible for us to all rank things the same here. The difficulty you play on, the weapon types you prefer, and your approach to combat are all going to create dramatically different rankings from what I throw up on the screen. But that's totally cool and it's part of the beauty of games like this. There's no such thing as a correct way to play. That said, the results of these extensive tests have made it clear that there are some objectively stronger weapon archetypes and skills that bring more to the table than others and that's what I'm here to share with you today. So let's lock and load. Our first skill today is Ballistics, and if you've put some serious time into Starfield, you've probably noticed that a lot of weapons fall into this category. To clarify, Ballistic weapons include any weapon that exclusively deals physical damage and fires bullets. This does not include explosives or particle beam weapons, despite them having a physical damage component. Ranks 1-3 to three of Ballistics is nothing revolutionary, it's just a flat 10% damage buff with each rank. Rank 4, however, increases range by 30%. Now, all weapon descriptions list their range, and we can see that hitting rank 4 directly changes that stat on any ballistic weapon. But how does range actually work? Well, as a weapon deals damage at or below the listed range, which is that number in meters from your target, you can expect the weapon to do full damage barring any armor that the enemy has. Once you pass that range, your damage will decrease linearly, down to 50% of its base damage for most weapons, and even as far down as 25% for weapons like miniguns. This max damage falloff typically happens around 1.5 to 2 times further than the weapon's listed range, depending on the weapon type. Hitting max damage falloff is actually a lot easier than you'd think, and many weapons have very short ranges, so unless you're barrel stuffing your enemies or you only use long range rifles, you've probably been unknowingly losing a ton of potential damage. This makes the rank 4 perk actually pretty strong, especially for pistols and shotguns. Also, something super weird I've observed is for some reason, anytime you equip a legendary weapon, it'll constantly read out a different damage value. It's very strange and something is tripping the game up because it has zero effect on the actual damage of the weapons. It's just a visual bug. If you want to see the proper true damage values of a weapon, just have a normal weapon equipped first. This also applies while you're trying to mod weapons, so don't let this trip you up. There's a bunch of other weird stuff like this going on in combat, and some of it actually impacts the game damage too. So back to ballistics, it isn't anything flashy compared to some other skills, but it gets the job done, and because most weapons in the game fall into this damage type bucket, you get a decent bang for your buck. Overall, I'd say it's a B tier skill, with the rank 4 perk being slightly more valuable, especially for those short range weapons, so I'd give that an A. Second is dueling, and this is obviously a must have for anyone trying to make a melee build viable. You deal more damage and take less at rank 1, you run faster after kills at rank 2, which is helpful for gap closing considering you actively put yourself in the line of fire with a melee build. Rank 3 is an improved rank 1, and rank 4 is another welcome solid buff that heals you for 10% of your max HP with every melee kill. The unfortunate thing about this skill is that it is exclusively for melee weapons and it does not improve your unarmed combat lethality or provide any of its defensive benefits while unarmed, which makes those builds even worse than they already were. In terms of ranking, this is basically a must-have S tier skill for melee builds that honestly, in terms of what it provides for a single skill, is actually significant compared to many other skills we've looked at. Of course, I'd guess that 99% of us are not planning on hacking and slashing our way through Starfield, so if you are one of those people, this skill is probably absolutely absolutely useless F tier garbage to you since none of the benefits work without a melee weapon in your hands. Now lasers is a truly nut skill thanks to its rank 4 perk and it can completely trivialize certain enemy encounters on very hard that would normally have taken hundreds of rounds of ammo to deal with. Ranks 1 to 3 of lasers is a boring old 10% damage per rank, but rank 4 gives you a 5% chance to set enemies on fire. The crazy thing about this is that every single damage instance is a roll to proc that fire effect and the effect can stack and it does damage based on percent max health of the enemy, so it only becomes more valuable as you increase difficulties. 
Now, even normal laser weapons like an Orion are already solid options for making this perk shine, but your cutter is coated in such a way that it registers dozens of low damage hits per second, allowing you to rack up an insane amount of burn effects on a target in a few moments. I've tested this extensively, and it's a bit strange how this whole burn thing actually works. First, the damage numbers you see on screen are not actually true. It instead represents the damage that would be done to a target on normal difficulty. Assuming a target doesn't die before then, a target set on fire will take 9 ticks of damage equal to 20% of their max HP, and this seems to be true for all alien creatures or enemies with no energy resistance. Obviously, if they have any energy resistance, that's going to diminish the percent HP damage as well since it scales against that. Specifically, higher level humanoid enemies become more and more resilient with level, with this level 98 pirate only taking roughly 10% of their max health damage, while an ecliptic takes around 15%. Even with those reduced numbers, it's still quite easy to proc the burn effect enough times to melt any enemy using your cutter, and it technically is indeed the highest DPS weapon in the entire game, only ever being beat out by rapid firing the sunless space power. The caveat to this being that you would need to be willing to get very close to your enemies as the cutter cannot hit anything more than 12 meters away, regardless of range boosting skills. It's not the perfect weapon, and it's definitely less practical against low level enemies, but it's undoubtedly the strongest against the right target, and it's actually extremely fun to light people up with this. All in all, lasers is a plain old skill without the rank 4 perk, and I generally consider it a B tier skill, but specifically the rank 4 perk is godly as it unlocks the objectively highest DPS weapon in the game against tanky enemies, so that warrants calling that perk specifically S tier. That's a nice hat Sam's wearing. It's good to be on the boat. Lives get stuffy sometimes. Maybe you should take it. Pistol certification is more of the same rank 1 to 3 buffs, but you do get a little more bang for your buck with rank 2 giving an additional 15% damage, and rank 3 giving 25% more damage than the previous rank. That said, pistols are objectively the weakest weapon type in the game, and I personally wouldn't recommend using them if you care about your damage output. They do, however, let you do a longer combat slide while in first person with gymnastics level, and for some reason, it's only pistols that allow you to do that, and only while in first person, so that's cool, I guess. Now, the rank 4 perk says that you're granted a plus 25 crit strike chance for 5 seconds after killing an enemy, but this is either flat out broken or it's coded to be multiplicative to increase crit strike chance, which makes it pretty trash without heavy investment into the later crit skills in the tree. My tests seem to indicate that it's the latter, and while I haven't found an exact value, I'm almost certain that your base crit strike chance is between 4 and 5%. This would make a 25% multiplier only add 1 to 1.25% crit strike for 5 measly seconds after you kill an enemy with rank 4, which would be complete ass. Now, we'll get to this later, but there are some means of increasing your crit strike chance by 5, 15, 25, and 25% again, all additively on four different skills. So assuming you had all those other skills and met those conditions to make each work, you would go from a theoretical 75-ish percent crit strike up to around 93, but only for five seconds. Now, I don't know about you, but this feels like way too many conditions to meet for a 5 second buff that I might not even be able to make use of by the time I reach my next target. Not even accounting for the fact that I'd have to be using a pistol, which doesn't even do about one third of the damage that most rifles can do, which would also have better range than the pistol as well. I think pistol certification is a C tier skill, with a rank 4 perk that is next to useless without investing another 7 to 15 points into the tree with the right weapon, and even then I'd still say it's only a B tier rank 4 perk at that point. If they change that buff to last even 10 seconds instead of 5, I'd say it would warrant a full ranking bump, but alas, this is what we're stuck with. If you enjoy pistols though, go nuts. Oh, would you look at that, more damage increases for the first 3 ranks of a skill. Shotgun certification does however have a neat rank 4 perk that is more geared towards high difficulty level players, as on lower difficulties most shotguns have little trouble 1 or 2 tapping enemies. At rank 4, it says you have a small chance to stun additional targets with shotguns for a limited time. This is a really shitty description, and the whole additional targets thing is unnecessary confusion. Here's how I would reword it. Shotgun kills grant a X% percent chance to stun enemies with shotgun attacks for 15 seconds. That's how it actually works. I'm not sure what the exact percentage chance to stun is, but basically, for 15 seconds after getting a shotgun kill, any shotgun attack has a percentage chance of stunning an enemy instantly. This would surely be helpful on higher difficulties as a shotgunner who's in the thick of it, where enemies take a good few shells to go down. Having this perk gives you the option to move on to a new target right after stunning them, as they're no longer a threat. 
Overall, the skill is fine as more damage never hurts, but the rank 4 perk is minimally useful for most players. I'd say it's a B all around unless you're on a higher difficulty, in which case I'd say A is a fair rank for rank 4. Demolitions is a skill for any of you who enjoy things that go boom. Unfortunately, it's not that remarkable. At rank 1, you get a handy little trajectory indicator that helps remove the guesswork out of throwing explosives, along with some increased blast radius. Rank 2 is pure damage, and rank 3 reduces damage from explosives, which honestly is not very common from my experience. If anything, I've probably done more explosive damage to myself than enemies have. It's kind of funny even though it makes sense, but if you hit yourself with your own explosives at level 2 demolitions, you end up taking more damage from them. I'm not sure if this would apply to explosives that come from enemies, but it's still interesting nonetheless. The issue with this skill is that despite the bonuses being moderately useful, grenades just kind of suck in general and exclusively using rocket launchers is pretty much impossible due to the lack of available rocket ammo. Throwables cap out at around 200 damage without critting, and getting 40mm XPL rockets are very rare to find at vendors, and when you do it's often in very low quantities, so you're left to scavenge the rest of them, which is also not going to be very common. Rockets are pretty damn strong when you have demolitions and heavy weapons maxed out, but they're really more of a special treat that you get to enjoy here and there, rather than your primary means of combat damage. Because it's simply an unsustainable playstyle, I can't in good conscience rank this any higher than a C and just barely at that. There are still some legitimate benefits that it provides, but I wouldn't go so far as to say that they're worth the point investment over some of the more viable combat styles. This makes for an easy transition to heavy weapon certification, which once again gives percent damage increases for ranks 1 to 3, while rank 4 gives you 25% physical resistance while ADSing a heavy weapon. As we just discussed, it's pretty hard to reliably use heavy weapons as your only source of damage. Rockets are rare, and miniguns chew up ammo like no other and deal very low amounts of damage per bullet, so you're going to be constantly hitting up shops if you want any chance of using them continuously as well. The rank 4 perk is honestly nothing special either, as you're not going to be spending any significant time ADSing with a rocket launcher, which is arguably the better of the two heavy weapon types. For the minigun, it's slightly more useful as you're more or less a slow moving pile of sludge while firing it, but is it worth throwing 4 points into earlier on? Definitely not. I genuinely think this is a D tier skill as you can barely make use of it, and it provides even less general benefits than Demolitions did. If anyone has a reliable way to get consistent rocket ammo, let me know, then I'd consider ranking this up a little higher. Incapacitation is a trash skill that is only just barely relevant to players trying to play the game as a pacifist, or to those who prefer to stun enemies during stealth encounters. Even then, just using stealth to multiply your EM damage output is almost always better and a more reliable option than this pile of shit. 3 skill points to get 15% more EM damage is a joke. The final rank is an effective 45% boost, which is undoubtedly better until you realize just how long it takes to stun higher level enemies. On higher difficulties, it's borderline impossible to stun NPCs with EM damage, unless you specifically go out of your way to modify an Equinox to fully automatic. Once the enemy is incapacitated, you're still going to have to take it out, and it'll wake up as soon as you attack it, so what's the point? This one takes the cake for me for the worst skill on the tree, and honestly, I put it up in the top 3 most useless skills in the game. F of shame. Moving on to particle beams, we have, huh, another skill with 10% damage increase for the first 3 ranks. Imagine that. Thankfully, there's at least a unique rank 4 perk where you get a flat 5% crit chance, which is simply fine and nothing special. In case you were wondering, crit strikes do around 100% more damage than a regular hit on non-automatic weapons, around 80% more with automatic weapons, and around 200% more if you're using a suppressed weapon. Now I've only seen the suppressed bonuses work specifically on pistols and snipers, but I wouldn't be surprised if it worked on other long range rifles. However, I have seen suppressors on weapons that are automatic by default, and it does not apply the suppressed crit bonus. There are some other very weird interactions with critical damage depending on how you mod certain weapons, but it's too complicated to get into right now and I'll save that for another video. It's very bizarre, sometimes even giving you 9 times more crit damage than the base damage. So using the 100% bonus for simplicity sake, a 5% bonus to crit strike chance translates to an unremarkable 5% damage bonus unless you invest in other skills that boost crit strike damage or add additional effects down the line. It's just another B tier skill that doesn't hurt for anybody using particle beam weapons, which are quite solid weapons honestly. Rifle certification is our final weapon class skill and, well have we done this before? 10% damage for ranks 1 to 3 again. I guess this is as good a time as any to quickly explain how damage is actually calculated. So we have all these skills that provide percent damage increment increases, but whether they're multiplicative or additive makes a significant difference on the potential damage output. 
In the case of Starfield, we've been blessed with multiplicative damage calculations, which means a weapon that deals 100 damage and receives two separate buffs of 20% damage will not deal 140 damage, but instead 144 damage, since we've got 100 times 1.2 1 for 120, then that times 1.2 1 for 144. The larger those percent modifiers get, the more impactful they'll become. So this makes a compelling case for you to heavily invest in a single weapon class like rifles and a specific damage type like ballistics, which would then give you a 69% damage buff instead of just 60% if it was just additive. And of course, much more than a smattering of 10% buffs across the board. Getting back to rifle certification, the rank 4 perk provides 30% faster reload times while standing still. And while this is definitely a nice to have, it's far from game changing. It does have some nice synergies with the other reload skills, but again, it's not necessary. I personally think rifles are the best weapon type in the game by a mile, especially the Beowulf as it performs in just about every combat scenario while boasting a strong range and not chewing through ammo like some of the other guns. That said, this skill is still pretty basic, so it's getting a B across the board. Marksmanship is a pretty bad skill at its earliest ranks, and it requires you to use semi-automatic weapons for it to work. Ranks 1 and 2 only increase crit strike chance by 3 and 8% respectively, which only translates to 3 and 8% damage, which is atrocious. Rank 3 provides 15% crit strike chance, which is again 1 to 1 for damage at baseline, and it's not terrible, but this is still lower than the other class and damage specific upgrades. The rank 4 perk however is incredibly strong and hard carries this skill. Crits with non-auto weapons that don't have a scope deal double damage, which is a huge DPS increase, especially considering the additional 15% crit strike chance you would have gained from the first three ranks of the skill, and then crits with scoped weapons knock down enemies on the shot after landing a crit. At first I thought this wasn't especially good, but man this is hella OP on higher difficulties against bullet spongy enemies. With a decent fire rate weapon, you can pretty much stun lock an enemy indefinitely. This skill has even further synergies with later skills in the tree, so if you're planning on putting points into combat and you enjoy semi-auto weapons, this is actually a banger of a skill at max rank. I'd say it's a D in the first two ranks, but as a whole this skill is really an A, especially the rank 4 perk. Rapid reloading provides you with increased reloading times on weapons of the four different damage types, along with some other small perks. Rank 1 for ballistic weapons, 2 for energy and EM, and 3 for particle beams. Rank 3 also provides you with a 50% chance to avoid getting interrupted while reloading, which is particularly nice against humanoid enemies, especially if you're an up close and personal player who doesn't have the luxury of avoiding most enemy fire. Rank 4 gives you a chance on any hit to increase reload speed by an additional 50% for 15 seconds. The chance to hit feels like it's around 10 to 15%, and this counts for any hit. So if you shoot a shotgun that shoots 10 pellets, each of those counts as an individual hit. The same goes for the cutter, where you can basically instantly proc this. And when this procs, it actually stacks with all other reload time buffs to a point where you reload insanely fast. If you have a rifle with a 5 second reload time, for example, and had rank 4 rifle certification and rank 4 rapid reloading, procking this buff would drop the reload time down to 1.23 seconds. As nice as this is, I'd argue that this is a convenience skill more than anything, and for many people it won't be worth the points. But if you run weapons with small mag sizes like shotguns, or very high base reload times like snipers, then there's a better case for investing here as it's technically a form of DPS increase. It's got a comfortable spot in the B tier. Sniper certification is another super strong skill in its final ranks that has amazing synergy with marksmanship and sharpshooting at the end of the tree. Rank 1 just makes scoped weapons sway less, but you can definitely feel it. Rank 2 allows you to hold your breath longer with scoped weapons as well. From testing it appears to take 2 times longer to deplete O2 on rank 2 versus 0. Rank 3 is where you really start to reap the rewards of this skill. Any headshot while ADSing a scoped weapon increases crit chance by a whopping 25%. And this isn't like pistol certification where it's multiplicative, it's just a flat 25% additional crit strike chance. This can also stack with marksmanship and your base crit chance for close to 45% crit strike chance to absolutely truck enemies. On top of that, rank 4 gives you a whole 50% damage increase while scoped in, so you can really pump up the damage with this skill if you don't mind a little magnification. I find the medium scope to be the most versatile, but you may want something a bit shorter if the zoom messes with you too much while closer range. This is definitely an A tier skill that gives you a very substantial boost to total damage output at ranks 3 and 4, and I'd say it's easily an A overall, and the rank 4 perk is an S because it gives an insane amount of damage for a single skill point. 
Targeting is the direct counter to sniper certification, and this skill is all about being a hip-firing gunslinger. This skill is super weird, and frankly, the accuracy boosting portion of the skill was tough to test and discern any noticeable differences between ranks 1 and 4. I can say with confidence that this skill is also 100% bugged, so it's a huge mess. Let's start with the simple stuff. Every rank allows one additional enemy to be marked when they damage you, up to four enemies at rank 4. The range of the marking effect increases by 25 meters for every rank. This is actually kind of nice, and it acts like a watered down sense star stuff during active combat. Ranks 1 to 3 supposedly increase accuracy while hip firing, but take a look at these spray patterns and tell me if you can see any discernible difference. I feel like at the absolute most, there's a very subtle tightening of the spray pattern. Because the second test was done further away from the wall, it's a little easier to see a difference between ranks 0 to 3. The first three ranks are also supposed to increase your range while hip firing, and they do for ranks 1 and 2, and then at rank 3, it reverts back to 0 bonus for some stupid inexplicable reason. Once you get to rank 4 though, it works like it should have at rank 3. Did anyone actually play test these skills? Like seriously. Based on my tests, each rank increases your range while hip firing by 10%, as we were able to deal max damage starting at 20 meters, then 22, 24, rank 3 was broken, and then 26 at rank 4. The actual rank 4 perk also gives you a 10% chance to disarm targets while hip firing. This chance is honestly pretty low, but it has some awesome synergy with rank 4 lasers if you wanted to run a cutter only build, as it's incredibly easy to proc the weapon drop with the cutter. Just run by every enemy, give them a few laser tickles, set them on fire for good measure, and take their gun before moving on to the next victim. All things considered, it's a weird janky mess of a skill that if it's all working properly, does in fact have some solid utility if you're not planning on doing any ADS combat. I'll give it a B, but man, they really need to play test these skills better and work on making descriptions that aren't incredibly obscure like increased, notably increased, and greatly increased accuracy. Onto the master combat skills, we've got armor penetration. At ranks 1 and 2, you get 15% armor pen per rank, and then rank 3 gives you an additional 20%. Rank 4 provides another 25% for 6 seconds, but only after a critical strike, so you'll need some investment in marksmanship or sniper certification for this to really shine. Now, armor is a bit of a mysterious stat, and it's pretty well impossible to tell how much armor an enemy has without console commands. What's important to understand is that armor specifically impacts ballistic physical damage, not rockets, explosives, lasers, EM, or particle beams. Therefore, this skill is only useful to fans of launching tiny little projectiles. While this sounds like a bummer for the other types, it's not actually quite as bad as you think. You're probably not going to be doing a ton of explosives damage to an enemy in any case, and then energy damage is the only other actual damage you would be dealing since EM is just for stunning. At least from my observations, enemies always have significantly less energy defenses than they do armor. In fact, your ballistics weapons are more handicapped from the start than any other damage type, but they have the most to gain from increased skill investment. Against higher armor enemies, ballistic weapons are horrible without some form of armor penetration. So much so that you could be doing only 25% of your max potential damage. You can see from this example that our damage against this Terramorph starts at 16, then it scales up to 42 at level 3 with 50% armor pen, and then all the way up to 57 at rank 4 with 75 armor pen. This is an insane difference in damage that completely unlocks your character potential against high level enemies, and even against lower leveled enemies that have less armor, you'll still get around a 20% damage boost in most cases. If you're a ballistics weapons user, then this skill is technically the best bang for your buck in terms of potential damage increase, scaling up to 400% damage in the most extreme scenarios. Nothing else comes even close to this. Of course, you could just use armor piercing rounds and this would nullify the entire skill, but it would be at the cost of not being able to use a different ammo type or mag size that could just as easily provide some other great benefit to your weapon. And weapons like shotguns can't use AP rounds, so you're out of luck there. I haven't had a chance to test every single ammo type with shotguns, but in case anybody does find out that flechette rounds or something else does have armor piercing, let me know in the comments. I'll honestly say that armor piercing actually warrants an S tier rating, especially since more than half of weapons deal damage that factors in armor. Just be ready to spend the skill points to make this work. Second to last skill is crippling, and I think this one is a bit of a mixed bag. The skill badge for it is of course an awesome reference to Skyrim's arrow in the knee, but the skill itself isn't particularly compelling to me compared to some of the benefits from other skills. At rank 1, you have a 30% increased chance for humans to enter a down state after taking enough damage. Now this whole down state mechanic is very unclear, but after doing quite a few tests, it seems that once an enemy crosses a certain HP threshold, that being 20% below rank 3 and 40% above rank 3, that a single roll is done to determine if that enemy will go into the down state. It'll never roll this again, it just happens or it doesn't. 
Once in a down state, it's very rare for them to actually get up. And if they do, it takes way longer than any firefight would take to clean up. So rank two of this skill is kind of useless in my eyes. This 30% increased chance to down enemies seems like it's additive to the base chance, which is probably around 15% after the numerous tests I've done. And therefore that would make the down state chance go up to 45%, which seems correct as I was getting almost 50-50 down states at rank 3 during testing. Rank 4 is solid too as it allows these mechanics to apply to all enemies, not just humanoids, and you deal double damage to foes in a down state, which can be nice. Of course, they're all only dropping into a down state when they hit 40% HP, and the chance to go into a down state is 45%. So this only actually translates to an effective DPS increase of 18%, which isn't remarkable. Although the fact that they won't be shooting back is a decent bonus. I think this skill looks a bit better on paper than it really is, and it's quite RNG dependent. Plus you need to dump a good few skill points into the combat tree to access it, when the other two master skills are better in my opinion. I'd say this is a C tier skill that fell just shy of B. Last but not least is sharpshooting. This skill is all about crits, with each of the first three ranks unlocking increased critical damage to different parts of an enemy's body. Now the third rank says it increases all critical damage to enemies, but it actually just fills the gap between legs and body from ranks 1 and 2. So no matter where you hit someone, you'll have that 50% increased crit damage, but it doesn't further boost the head and leg crit damage, sadly. Now the rank 4 perk has the potential to be very good or next to useless, and obviously since this skill is focused around crits, its efficacy is directly tied to your crit strike chance. At rank 4, upon killing an enemy with a critical strike, your crit strike chance increases by a full 25% for 20 seconds. This is an additive 25% bonus that synergizes perfectly with marksmanship and sniper rifle certification, as you're very likely to score the critical hit to activate it, and the 20 seconds that you get is a very generous amount of time to hold the buff to increase your chances of keeping it alive for subsequent kills. Of course, without investing into crit strike skills like this, sharpshooting's rank 4 perk and the skill in general falls off really hard. With the right skill distribution, this is a straight up big damage increase with a 20 second buff that's actually possible to upkeep compared to some of the more ridiculous ones that only last 5 seconds. I'd say that the skill overall is an A, with the rank 4 perk being S tier for crit builds, but definitely D tier overall for anyone who hasn't invested points into crit strike. All right, we have made it through all 17 combat skills. Let's do a quick wrap up here. Any of the damage type skills like ballistics, lasers, particle beams are all reasonably good. Dueling obviously depends on whether you're running a melee build or not. Pistols are okay, but I think they're the worst weapon type in the game. Shotguns are solid. Demolitions is okay as it provides some defensive stats, but explosives themselves and heavy weapons are not that feasible to use as primary damage dealers. Incapacitation is just complete ass, I wouldn't waste a skill point on it until I'm very late into the game. Rifles are great but the skill itself is mid. Marksmanship is a pretty decent skill and it's critical to critical strike builds. Rapid reloading is more of a convenient skill but it does have a more significant use case for certain weapon types. Sniper rifle certification is extremely good if you're running scoped weapons and it pairs great with marksmanship and sharpshooting. The flip side of it being targeting which is also a pretty solid skill for those of you who prefer to hip fire. Armor penetration is just an absolute must have if you're running any type of ballistic weapons frequently as it has the potential to dramatically increase your DPS the stronger your targets get. Crippling has some utility, but it's a pretty underwhelming skill overall. And finally, sharpshooting is amazing for anybody who's running a crit build, but if you are not running it, it will be a terrible use of skill points. There are some rank 4 perks that outshine their general skills respective rankings, such as ballistics with its range increase, lasers with the ability to apply burn stacks, shotgun certification for stunning enemies which is more useful on higher difficulties, marksmanship with its potential to dish out tons of extra damage or to permanently stagger enemies, sniper certification for huge boosts to DPS as well, armor penetration we already know is an S tier skill but its final perk is also extremely useful, and sharpshooting with its potential to add another 25% crit strike to what will likely already be a very high crit percent percentage build. And that fully wraps up the combat tree. If you want more in-depth research based Starfield content and you want to make sure you don't miss the science tree when it gets dropped, make sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. If you want early access to content like this and other exclusive perks, swing by my Patreon where the first 25 patrons get a special discount. If you're wondering whether social skills are important at all, you can find out all the answers in this video next. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.